This week began the yearly exercise of increasing futility for WWE, the WWE Draft. Hip, hip, hooray! I mean, really. It's a yearly excuse to kind of shake stuff up a little bit, but then they ultimately don't really abide by that, and then eventually talents are crossing over between different shows anyways. The way they structure it just doesn't make a whole lot of sense, and you try to rip off things from football and basketball drafts, but you clearly have folks there that have absolutely no idea, Vince McMahon, how those sports leagues drafts are actually done. It bees what it bees. But it is something to break up the monotony once in a while. So what the heck, why not go with it? Because it could potentially produce some new things, you know, freshens and cleans the palate a little bit, wipes the slate clean, if you will. So, so it's worthwhile. Uh, so you kick off the show at the very beginning with Stephanie McMahon coming out and announcing the first set of draft picks. Now, as was a common theme throughout the course of the night, a lot of the draft picks were people staying on their shows, which I, I grant you feels like a bit of a, a waste, but it is what it is. A uh, big news from that first little bit was that Seth Rollins is switching to SmackDown. So the Monday Night Messiah is now going to be the Friday Night Friar, I don't know what he's going to be. Like, going to have to come up with a whole new gimmick and everything. And some of you were probably excited about this. You're like, yes, this ends the Mysterio family drama. <laughs> I don't think so. But we'll get to that later. Your first big match of the night was a brutal affair. Big E versus Sheamus Falls Count Anywhere match. Like, this was exactly what the hell a Falls County area where match should be. It was physical. These guys fought all over the place. Like, this really, really worked. I enjoyed this immensely. And not just because it had a bunch of brutal spots in it, a bunch of brutal stuff in it, but because there was actually a little bit of story to this. Like, you take time to invest in the characters a little bit. You get take time to nurture a story a little bit. You get away with these matches on TV, and they work and work very well. And they certainly did. And certainly Big E comes out on the other side looking pretty good for this. So whatever singles push they're preparing him for, whatever singles push they're really sending him on, uh, early on, it looks like they're doing some good things. And then you get the big reveal after the match. There's Big E, and here comes Kofi Kingston. Boom! 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 And Xavier Woods! Xavier Woods! They're back! The New Day is back. Hide your kids. Hide your white girls. The New Day is back. And they're running a ravage. Ain't that right, Xavier? Yeah! <laughs> but this, of course, would not be the last time we saw The New Day during the show. More on that in a little bit. You know, I got to say this for Jey Uso. He is, if nothing else, stubborn and determined in his villainous ways. Like, he wants to know the stipulation, and he's begging to know. He's trying to hold up the show and stop everything because it, it's just got to be about Jay. It's got to be about me, me, me. It's not us, us, us or oos, oos, oos. It's about Jay, Jay, Jay. Me, me, me. And you know, that's why he can't be the patriarch of the Samoan dynasty. That's why Roman is the patriarch of the Samoan dynasty. That's why he's the tribal chief. That's why he's the big dog. That's why he is everything. That's why he's the hero. That's why he's the top baby face in all of professional wrestling today. Do you see, people, what he has to put up with week in and week out? Think about how grating that would get on your nerves. So yes, of course, eventually, when Roman responds, looking like the big freaking badass that he does. Can't remember the last time we had a character feel this legitimately badass. And now even go past Brock. Like, when's the last time you had somebody feel this truly badass? The tribal chief is every bit of that. And he's trying to help. You know, he's trying to look out for his family. Jay just doesn't appreciate it. So he gets what he wants. He found out the stipulation. It's an I quit match at Hell in a Cell. Good luck with that, Jay. Have a nice day. You're about to get your shit rocked. That's all we got to say. 
And then we got Stephanie McMahon announcing the next kind of wave of draft picks. Notable ones are AJ Styles and Naomi going to Monday Night Raw. Maybe we could hope that this is going to lead to Naomi actually getting something being done with her. Because certainly, I would be cool with that. And I think a lot of you would say, no, Naomi deserves better. And frankly, yes, yeah, she kind of does. So let's hope Raw is a fresh start. Wiping the slate clean, new opportunity. The big news here to me, though, is that Bianca Belair is coming to Friday Night SmackDown. Yes! That means I get to watch Baby Girl and I don't have to check out the highlights of Raw on YouTube to do so. <laughs> yes! The only downer for this, to me, really truly, throughout the course of the whole night, is that the Hurt Business is staying on Raw. But I guess Raw's got to have something. they got to have something. You leave me Roman... You gave me Bianca Bella. My God. My God. And Sami Zayn is staying on SmackDown. Not a bad day's work, I gotta say, I gotta say. And everything was feeling really good. The vibes of the show were just really flowing for me. And then, as is so often the case, it seems like every week, hashtag Riddle ruins everything. This tag match, Miz and Morrison versus Jeff Hardy and Matt Riddle. Really? Really? We couldn't go one freaking week without having Matt Riddle on our TV? We couldn't have one freaking week without him having to wrestle in a match? Oh, and here come the illusions to. Oh, Jeff and Matt working together. <laughs> no! Which is exactly what the hell somebody should have told somebody backstage when they came up with the big idea to bring Lars Sullivan back on the show. Uh, the Big Bear is back. He saw the men playing around in the ring, and he wanted some of that ass. Me. Mitch. <laughs> I think the biggest highlight of this, though, because just dumb. I'm sorry. Like, why are people supposed to care about Lars Sullivan now all of a sudden? Is Triple H like in the... The, the tweet talking about <laughs> Lars Sullivan's favorite match. <laughs> and it's a shot from his, a still shot from his porno. Praise God! Ugh! Oh, now that, ladies and gentlemen, that is something that you should have faith in. <laughs> Fantastic. Um, what you could do, though, is sit there and come up with something better to do for this women's championship match. I understand you're trying to tease something big, and you're trying to do something big, because it's WWE drafts, so you're trying to draw people in, and you're saying, hey, Sasha Banks, Bailey, Sasha gets her hands on Bailey, it's for the title. Like, anybody actually believed this was going to be a real thing? So you did actually end up having them wrestle for a couple of minutes, just for it to not really be a thing, and they go after each other. If that was the case, then screw the damn match, and just have them fight each other. Don't even start the stupid thing. Don't even start it. You just didn't need to. You know what I mean? And now, of course, we've got the big reveal. For those of you that were worried or wondering, indeed, you're getting Sasha versus Bailey inside Hell in a Cell. Are you happy now? Are you really? Did you really want it? Because by God, you got it. You didn't get much out of that match, though, certainly, and that's not surprising. The big surprise of the night to me, though, is that we've got new tag team champions. The New Day challenging Shinsuke and Cesaro. And not only that, like, them coming back and winning the titles, that was one thing. But then afterwards, you do that next round of picks, and we find out that the New Day, and he's specifically mentioning Xavier Woods and Kofi Kingston are heading over to Monday Night Raw. And that Big E is staying on SmackDown. And I understand a lot of fans have some emotions about this. It's heartbreaking to them. It's disappointing to them. It's sad for them. But the reality is all good things must come to an end. You stay the hero too long, you're around long enough to become the villain. It's time. It's time for Big E to break out on its own. It's time for him to get his shot. And to me, personally, I'm going to challenge the New Day fans that were kind of raging about this. Like, how dare you want them to stay together as a group selfishly when this is a chance for Big E to break out and become a big star relative to the rest of the company? How dare you, for your own selfish reasons, 
try to keep him in a mid-card faction tag team type of spot instead of wanting him to pursue a potential Royal Rumble match win and a freaking main event type spot at WrestleMania. Who the hell are you to sit there and call yourself a true fan of Biggie in the New Day if you're sitting there saying that crap? Ah. This is time and it was perfect. Kofi and Xavier don't have to turn on Big E. Big E doesn't have to turn on them. The man is keeping them apart. Like, it's perfect. It works. Kofi and Xavier Woods can do some good things on Raw. God knows that show needs something good. And Big E can really strike out on his own on SmackDown. Like, where's the bad in this? I get that a lot of you are entertained by the group. And you love the group. And you weren't ready for this. But deep down in the cackles of your heart, you have to know that it was time. Don't you? Kofi knows it. Xavier Woods knows it. Big E knows it. And yes, as much as it sucks and as sentimental as you can get about it, because these dudes have been together a long time, and now you just got Kofi and Xavier coming back, and now they're immediately split up, and you're like, this is some cruel, cruel type of troll job by Vince. It's 100% the right decision. Get over it. You always have the memories, and when in doubt, you can always put them back together again. But this ain't that time. Right now is Big E's time to shine. Right now is Big E's moment. Right now is Big E's opportunity. Let him break off and go reach for the brass ring. The main event was The Fiend versus Kevin Owens. And by this point in time in the show, I was just kind of like, you know, are they guys going to draft the Fiend to Raw? Like, that really feels like where he should be going. Um, did you ever think that Kevin Owens was actually going to win this match? Like, I will say this about the Fiend character. Is that the Fiend works well in kind of that Thunderdome with all the lights and everything. Like, it looks badass. And I'll at least say for the Fiend theme music, the entrance music is... So much of the music we hear is watered down. It's soft. It just doesn't pop. It doesn't hit. His theme hits. His entrance hits. And a lot of the guys that don't even have that. He got that, and he got that in abundance. Abundance. I'm telling you, abundance. But The Fiend wins to kind of close out the show, and that was SmackDown for this week. Um... Like I said, to me, really good show overall. You know, gave me a little humor there in the middle with Lars Sullivan's return. <laughs> but Roman just oozes machismo and badass. You got Big E having a big night, and now is the beginning of a big opportunity for him. Like, what the hell is there not for me to like about this? Not much, I gotta tell you. So you guys can feel free to let me know in the comment section what you thought about this week's SmackDown show. Smash that subscribe button. If you haven't done so already, click the bell. What the hell? So that way you're notified of future videos from this channel. Reminder, I'm the Schleich Daddy. This is OTRS Central. It's not the wrestling show you want. Just the wrestling show you need. And, and no, no matter what, Jay just couldn't help himself, could he? Well, you'll learn your lesson at Hell in a Cell.